do I do this? Can someone tell me how to add someone? How to go live with someone? I'm so stupid. I don't know how to do it. Okay. L <laughs> Lottie, you have to... Rook okay, here. Oh my god. Oops. Okay, guys, how do I add someone? Okay, view request. <sighs> Just a request. Okay. Wow, this is already off to a great start. Oh, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> No, it's fine. I actually, that was really funny. I was on my Finsta and I started no, live, did you do a live on my Finsta and I was like, oh my God, no one's, no one's, no one's watching. What's happening? And then my friend just texted me and he was like, did you mean to do that to your regular account? Oh, so God. it's fine. We're here now. I'm like really nervous. I don't know what so I'm like. I'm like sitting here with my wine, like trying to down it to be less nervous. I don't know. I'm not nervous for my first live, but like I know. But like with someone else, I think it's like more like. Ooh. Yeah, I feel you, but it's also like. I mean, yeah, but it, we can just make it like a FaceTime combo Activate. situation. But yeah, I think. <laughs> Things are always nerve wracking when you're like, when you know you're about to talk about like actual real stuff. That Yeah, like, and we haven't spoken for ages as well as in like, I haven't seen each other in so long because I've been stuck here, so. Yeah, like we'll like catch up and stuff, but it's been a while like since we sat down and had like a real big catch up. Okay, here's my little Um. Okay, so I'm gonna, wait, maybe I should be in this light. Is this light better? I kind of like, yeah, it's, it's a soft light, that one, it's a nice one. Yeah, this is a nice light, okay, I'll see you. Okay, so just to do a little intro, uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself. <laughs> so, my name is Lottie, um, obviously, and um, I'm a model. I've been modeling for like eight years now, I think. Um, eight yeah, years? Eight years, it's crazy. How old are you? So, I'm 22 now. Um, I was like 13 when I started like properly like getting into it, but I was like 16 mm -hmm. when I got my first job. Um, but yeah, how old were you when you started modeling? This is um, Elsie, by the way, everyone who doesn't know. The queen. Hi. Follow her. <laughs> I'm Elsie. I. So I started, it's so funny because like I never really wanted to model. <laughs> like I, I never. Crazy. I never thought about modeling. Yeah, I never did. And the reason that I started is because I finished high school early when I was like 17 and I wasn't going to college and I was like, okay, I have no money. Like I'm tall. Maybe I'll try this. And I was, I was just like, going to university, like college is what you guys call it. But yeah, I literally realized that I, there was nothing that I wanted to do. And I was like, I'm not like half clever enough to do any of these things. <laughs> So I was like, modeling sounds good, like moving to London, like getting my own life, like getting my own apartment, making money was just like such an easy option for me. I don't know whether you felt that. I honestly, like from the very moment that I started modeling, I was like, what am I doing with my life? Like this can only last so long. Like my anxiety about life and the future is so yeah. extreme. Did you feel like you had like, this like, every day? Like you were like this is totally like this. totally yeah. yeah and also like living in LA because I grew up in LA right so I moved to LA when I was 10 so when I moved here you just become like 
exposed to like a different way of life and it's like this little bubble and you feel like you have to like be young and hot and like also I feel like success is coming to people like a lot quick like like younger these Isn't days it crazy? I feel like getting famous for like the slightest things now like all this like tiktok stuff everyone's like getting so famous so quickly I'm like, I, I wonder how people like handle it because I don't know about you, but I handled it like quite well because I'd grown up with that. Like I'd grown yeah. up in the public eye and I was kind of used to it anyway. Um, so I never really struggled that much. But I'm like, I look at these like girls that are doing TikTok now and they get so much abuse and stuff on Oh my that. God, it gives me so much anxiety. I, like, I feel, I feel like girls. I would not know how to handle it. Like all that money and all that fame and all that like, that hate. I wouldn't know how to handle it if I was them, like if I hadn't grown up with it. Yeah, well, that's actually what I was going to ask you. And that was one of the questions that I got in my, like, when I did a little thing when I was like, ask us questions or whatever. Yeah. Um, like, do you experience a lot of hate online? And how do you, like, deal with it? Does it affect you? Like, what's what's that like for you? You know what, I actually, I don't get as much hate as I think other people do. I don't have as much of a following. I don't, my Instagram isn't so, like, there's not that much to hate on to be honest I, I don't know whether like that's bad to say but like I don't I don't post that often I'm not super active and stuff but I feel like the girls that are super active and posting and stuff and have a lot more following I feel like they get a lot of hate for the things that they do and it's just like it's crazy how you can hate on someone for like being beautiful or being successful or like whatever because I have friends that I see their Instagram so I see hate on them I'm like how can you hate on things like that which are like we should be celebrating each other do you know what I mean yeah, totally. I think that, like, just when you have an audience, you just have a responsibility to, like, make sure you're always being overly cautious or, like, overly sensitive to the world around you because Instagram can can end up being a tool for kind of, like, affirmation in a way. Like, if you're posting pictures of yourself or whatever, it can seem... I vain like, or it can like, feel like self-obsessed to everyone else like every I'm like yeah. I'm scrolling down Instagram like comparing myself constantly to other girls and I stuff. have I'm like, like I've been like doing? trying not to look I've been like trying not yeah. to look since I've been quarantined what has it's it like, what is like, like a like, day like, eating and stuff in quarantine don't you think like it's so difficult I feel like everyone experiences this like at the moment, it's so hard not to like just go downstairs to your fridge and eat everything in your fridge. That's and, like, what I'm doing. Time, like, that's fine. Like we need to enjoy ourselves. We've got like so much longer of this. Why the hell not? But no, it's hard. I think people are struggling a lot more with body image and like mental mental health right now than like yeah. ever before, which is crazy. But I mean, we've both experienced like mental health quite badly like in the past. I think. Yeah, we've, we've been through our share. Yeah. Well, I have always when you really get struggled with, you get started with modeling no like i was born anxious like i yeah when i was little like i every single night would like come if i heard like a tiny crack or like a i don't know like any sort of noise like for years and years and years i was convinced that i was going to be kidnapped murdered there would be a fire that my <laughs> house would burn down that the world Wait, would end That's like yeah no like my anxiety and I didn't know that it was anxiety when I was younger so I, I like I just thought like I was just constantly living in fear like I've struggled with anxiety from like the moment I came out the That's crazy. That's so <laughs> and so it just developed into I think that when you're born with something like that it's really important like the way that it's handled as a child and as you're growing up and I don't think I was like I, think people I don't think it was it ever well. People right dismiss well. it when you're successful and good looking or whatever. Like you are, you're so gorgeous and you're so successful. But I think people dismiss it because they're like, you don't have the right to feel like that. So right, like, right, right, right. Like, like you're, you're in this position, so, so it doesn't, it doesn't apply struggles. to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's crazy because I think everyone has their own struggles and like. I mean, we were speaking kind of briefly about this, but like the reason that well, what, the, what the reason was that you started LC Eats. Um, which is yeah. an amazing food page. You have to check it out. It's got the most amazing like recipes and <laughs> food info for like days. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I feel like my anxiety has always been so bad and I've always struggled with like my mental health and depression and stuff. And I've always kind of been like, because I didn't go to college, I was like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. And so I kind of just 
started modeling and it was this thing for me where I never really knew like who I was or what my identity was or what I really wanted to do. And so I felt like a lot of my life was just like waiting to be told like when my next shoot was or when my next yeah, person I, was no, or I when my next audition like was. Well. I you know? really felt that like I couldn't do anything until like it was like approved by people and I was just like, yeah. I was always waiting for like, I think that comes from like the, I need like validation. It's really weird. I think that's where it's all come from is like the modeling thing is you wait for the next job and you wait to be like showing the pictures and whether they want you or not. And it's all this like validation. And it's like all external too. It's like whether oh God, you're yeah. good enough based yeah. on the way that you look. And I also think that when you're modeling for so long, like you get, like at least for me personally, I got to this place where I was like, well, my worth as a human being and like my livelihood and all of that is based on how I look. So why is anybody going to give a shit about what I want to say or what I have to say? I do um, feel though that the modeling industry has um, kind of taken a turn in a way they like, they do actually kind of care now about if like, you have a personality or a skill or something like that. I feel like it's turned much more since I started. I don't know whether you feel that way. Since yeah. I started, it's much more about like your personality, I think a bit more now, but like at the beginning when I started, I was like, I have to be this size, I have to be this small. And it was like, I was so, I, I felt so much pressure in it as well. I completely understand. Yeah, like what what was like, what's your modeling journey been? Like, I actually wrote this question down because I thought it was <laughs> important. Like, yeah, no, it do, is. You, do you feel like since starting modeling, like, because you started so young, do you feel like you had to start thinking about things like your body and the way that you look and all of that, what, like, at a premature age and like do you think that's affected your development as a human you know i think it's weird because we didn't have instagram when we were younger did we we were like yeah we were kind of i mean instagram came around at like what like when we were like 14 13 14 yeah around um, so i never really had anything like that until probably like 13 14 when i started to um when i started to you know like become a woman or whatever and i do think that like yeah modeling didn't help with my self-image like i can constantly because i was smaller as well i constantly compare myself to like the taller models and the skinnier models mm -hmm. and like i have an i have an ass and i have like boo like i have boobs and like i i love that about myself but when i was younger i didn't because i saw the other models that i was going to the castings with and i was like holy fuck like i that, that i don't look anything like them yeah you know what I mean? But, like, now I've learned to accept that, like, that's me. Like, I'm not, like, a fat... Like, I don't feel to myself that, like, I'm that sort of, like, fashion model. Like, I feel like I have a lot more to give than that. And, like, I have my brand with Paxson. Like, I feel like I have a lot more things to give than just being, like, a pretty face. Because, yeah, I got sick of that. I got sick of just being, like, you know, you're used to this because of your, like... Right, you're, like, like, fitting into yeah. a mold of what somebody else wants you to be. Actually, that's what we were talking about when we were both in London and we sat down and had that, like, amazing conversation at the, oh my God, at that, so at the hotel. Fun. It was so fun. And we talked about it because I think it's so good that you're in a place where you can do, like... It's, like, Lottie and a brand. It's not, like you're modeling for this brand because they want to sell their stuff it's yeah, like I you like I and it, it because of who brand, you yeah. are totally and like yeah, i, I feel think like that's a good reason that like i feel like starting lc eats was probably something like that for you you felt like this is like another thing that like you're good at doing like you love you're passionate about it and yeah it's something that like i think it inspires people as well it's it's, it's a nice page so what do you think about that and why you started so well, I started it because I was, I honestly reached this point with modeling where I was just like, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, this is not like serving me. This is not creatively fulfilling. Like, I just don't feel, you know, yeah. great about yeah, what I, I'm I doing. I didn't feel like and I was felt hard for anything. I was like, I felt like, you know, I just went on set and did the shoot and I never felt proud. I've never felt proud about it. It's so weird. Because really? Actually, yeah. Yeah, I you like, definitely so should. Like, wow. Yeah, but I think it's just because when you're not like really challenging yourself, it's like, what do you really have to be proud of? Yeah, and so, <laughs> and so, but you should be so proud of yourself. Like, yeah, I've, like I've, there were certain goals that I set for myself in modeling that I was really glad when I achieved them, but it was yeah. never like something that I was so what's passionate your favorite about. Job that you've ever done? Do you think? Like, what's your That's best a good goal question. You're, like, proud well, when I started, I was like, I really want to do a guest campaign. And so I did that. And that was good. Ah, yes. And so I was very proud of that. But 
Um, but I don't really know. Honestly, like, I think that the reason I don't actually feel like I've ever really, like, made it as a model, like, I don't really see myself as a model at all. Neither do I. Neither do I. So and I feel like the reason that I never really, like, made it is because I never really wanted to, like, I was never really like, this is what I want to do yeah, in my life. I like, used it as like a stepping yeah. stone and like a tool to like build myself up in certain ways. Like that's why I've been able to do more acting stuff. And that's why I was able to do the LCE stuff. I really stuff. feel like it did make me more confident. Like, although it did like kind of detriment like how I felt about myself, a lot of the time it did make me more confident because there would be a lot of like jobs that I would go for and I'd be like, I'm never going to get it. And then I got it and I'd be like, <gasps> Yeah, <laughs> and it does like it builds you up in confidence. So even like the castings that I was like terrified to go to, yeah, like, I might not have got the castings, but the fact that I went and I did it, like I actually felt like that made me feel so much better about myself. But I mean, yeah, it is important to like let people know that like about the modeling industry and like let them know like because there are so many young girls I'm probably sure that are on here or um you know boys and girls um that are sort of sitting there wondering what it's like to model and whether they should do it and like it is an amazing thing you get to travel the world i would never have met you if it hadn't been for modeling i would never have met a lot of my amazing friends Same. i would never yeah. have to move to la like it's an amazing opportunity but you have to handle it in the right way you have to have amazing people around you around you and just try not to fall into the traps you know what i mean yeah well i think that for me I think that when I started out, I was so confused and I really didn't know how the industry works and I didn't know, I never knew like what my place was. I never understood like, where do I fit in in all of this? Yeah. And I was always kind of, I think that a lot of the stuff that I did um, was like out of fear and like pressure really? to like please others and like, do what I thought I was supposed to do because of the type of body type I have. And like, just like you and I, because when I started, I was like really, really skinny and like, I didn't really have big boobs and like, I, my body was still developing. And so I was in this weird in-between stage where I wasn't like, I'm really tall, but I wasn't like skinny enough to be high fashion. And I wasn't like yeah. curvy enough to be like commercial or whatever. So yeah. I felt like I was like, it was this constant, battle where I was like where do I fit in and I struggled with it for so long and like with with body dysmorphia and eating issues and stuff and then and then last year I was just like honestly this is like that this is not like why I'm like I give up doing this like some like something yeah somebody else I'm just yes I was like I'm so sick of being told like what I'm supposed to look like or what I'm supposed to be or what I'm what people want me to be like I'm fucking good enough I'm gonna like eat what I want I'm gonna like yes. be who I want I'm gonna like embrace who I am and like I'm, I still have so much to fucking like learn and so much more to do and so much more to figure out but that's like because I got a question too about like what's the best advice you could give someone or like tips for people who are trying to get into modeling and yeah. the so best I thing I can say crazy. Is, yeah the best thing I can say is just like you don't it's okay to say no to certain things yeah and the best thing that you can do is just be yourself just yeah. be you always like exactly and if don't try to be something you're not like fuck them i'm not being sorry to be rude but like literally don't try and ever hold up to anyone else's standards because you are your own person and like i personally that was something i seriously struggle with which is like not ever being like feeling good enough like is yeah like, with like no. and stuff because getting let down for castings and i'm sure actresses and actors have it as well it's like when you get told no for something for like casting audition you're like I'm such a shit like you literally just be like you're like yeah. oh, I'm awful I may as well quit like <laughs> yeah because it's literally like and then and then you have to like because because when you start out it's like the rejection of it is such a slap in the face you're just oh like god. oh my god what the fuck like they're telling me I'm not good enough because I'm not I'm not what they want or because I'm not pretty enough or because like yeah. I my boobs are too big or they're not big enough or they're this or they're that my waist isn't small enough and all this stuff and I'm just like I was constantly comparing myself you know, to I got my boobs done because I felt do you know what it was because models normally like as generic models do they have like small boobs and yeah. that's something kind of like a thing and I think you were born with your boobs obviously and you're lucky to have well that. I wasn't I born don't... with boobs but <laughs> Here we are. They came along. <laughs> they eventually drew in. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, no, I was just like, I was waiting for mine to grow. I was waiting for like, what happened to your boobs to happen to me? Oh my God, <laughs> when, I, when I first got boobs, I would literally wear like, when, you know, when they first start like growing in or whatever, I would wear like three sports bras and oh three God, yeah, t-shirts like like, laid like, over. Boobs. No, I wanted to hide them. Wait, like I stop. never wanted boobs. I was oh God, so, so ashamed. Actually, like, I was so embarrassed. I hated it. No. Yeah, That's but then crazy. I but then I grew into them and I was like, yeah, they're great. I love them. Yeah, they are amazing. They are incredible. <laughs> I, I like paid to have what you have. So. Do you regret <laughs> that at all? Or like how do you feel about that? I'm so happy I got my boobs done. It was like genuinely the best thing I've ever done. Like I'm not like <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Like, so many parents are probably going to message me and be like, what have you done? Um, but like, no, I'm so glad I got my boobs because I, I was always, it was always something I felt really uncomfortable about. It is something that you need to think about. Every surgery is something that you need to like thoroughly think about. And I thought about it for years. But I had one bigger than the other and it just made me feel super uncomfortable. Like, every girl does like, though. Yeah, but now my ex boyfriends would be like, oh my God, one's bigger than the other. And I was so That's awful. I know. I'm how old, old, how old, old were you when you got them done? Like, how could you? <laughs> yeah, fuck that. How old were you when you got your boobs done? So I was, uh, I think I was 18, 19, 19. I was 19 when I got my boobs done. Okay. Yeah. And so did you like, feel I, like pressure to do it? Or were you like, this is something that I'm insecure about and it's something that I'm going to do to like help myself. No pressure. I felt no pressure from anyone else. Like it was just like ex-boyfriends maybe did put it like plant, plant the seed in my brain. But mm -hmm. I genuinely wanted to do it for myself. I felt much more sexy and I felt, and I've got a big bum and I felt that it just like didn't match me. It didn't match my body, the small boobs. Like I just didn't. I understand. Like, me. Now I feel like this like, sexy, curvy like goddess. I'm like, yes. I like looking yeah, at I love that. Damn, like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just think that it's like it's a weird one, right? Because if there's if there's something you're doing, like a procedure or a surgery or a filler or this or that, like I don't I don't have anything and I'm like really scared of that kind of stuff. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm just I, I don't I think that as long as you're doing it for yourself and your own yeah. confidence, as long as you don't feel like you have to do it to please somebody else or like, cause it is really crazy. Like, I feel like there are so many people that look at, um, you know, like the supermodels of the world or like even oh just God, yeah. Instagram so girls don't realize that, like, that it's fake or that it's face tune or yeah. that it's like, it's this, it's this totally unrealistic, uh, unattainable body standard that yeah. people are looking at and they're like, why don't I look like that? Do you feel why? like it's easier for us? Because we know a lot of these people and because we have been around it for longer, we know that it, most of it is not real. Like on Instagram, we know the like backstory behind it. We know what's real and what's not. We know that the pictures have been edited. We can see some things that certain people that aren't yeah. actually can't see. And like, we know that certain people have had surgeries and we're like, do you know what I mean? I think it's yeah. really easier for us because we know rather than like some other young girls that might see it and go, oh God, I wish I looked like that. When realistically we know that they don't look like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that, I think that it does help. But then when there are moments that I catch myself looking at certain people that I know have like altered themselves or had like uh enhancements or whatever to make themselves feel better or to to you know for whatever reason they did it yeah. when i catch myself comparing myself to them even though i know that it's not real yeah. i then i then i'm like this is dangerous for the people who are looking at this and who think yeah. this is real because yeah. there are girls all over the world who are probably like why isn't my waist 22 inches why isn't my yeah. butt like a perfectly shaped whatever like i like it's not i do not I it's really not real people that come out about their surgeries and say like yeah i did that i had that i had this i had that because i think like a lot of i've i've heard of a lot of people that kind of like deny it and i just think like why why like why deny it if you've had it you've had it and like good for you i've had filler and i've had my boobs done and i'm ha completely happy with that whatever anyone yeah has to say with i it. think it's I great that you're open about it. it yeah because i think like Weirdly, I think like clients don't like it. I think a lot of like, I lose a lot of jobs because of like some of the surgeries that I've had done, but like, I'm very happy with that. And like, I'm very happy with the way that I look now. 
So I'm like, you know, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> no, but it's great. And I just think it's really important to be open about everything and like do everything that you do with conviction. Otherwise it's like, because people, if you are a public figure, people are gonna, what are you gonna say? Gonna Deny gonna it? And do. Lie? Yeah, they're gonna say, they're gonna see you and be like, oh, she's, you know, she's doing that. I wanna do that too. I wanna look like that. So it's like, yeah. yeah. And you know what else I'm gonna say that's actually really annoying? <laughs> Is that no, I get so much hate in my DMs that say like, you're a fake bitch, your body's fake, you have this, you have fake tits, fake ass. Like, I'm not gonna lie. People think I've had so much stuff done. Unbelievable. Like I, like, I have friends who are like, your friend Elsie, her body is ridiculous. And I'm like, I know, it's absolutely amazing. But like, everyone's body is, I think, I like, I think everyone has like a different thing of what they think is like an incredible body as well. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. So crazy. I think I was born into the wrong body. I just like, <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm so I'm jealous that you the food that you do and you stay skinny. I'm like, how? It's, I don't know. And then I feel like bad talking about it because I actually don't know. But it's just your metabolism. It's everyone's metabolism is different. Like, mine is crazy. Like, sometimes I'll be, like, big for myself. Like, you know when you put, like, put on a bit of chub? And, like, totally. I'll be fine, but I can lose it within, like, two days. Like, I'll be back. <laughs> my yeah, I'm the same. That's just what, that's being young. That is being young. And it is, but it is, like, everyone's metabolism is different. Everyone's different ages. It is very different. But you shouldn't have to apologize. You've got an incredible body and you're an amazing person, which is what really matters. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I just think I at the end of the day, the most important thing, too, is, like, I just think everyone is so hard on themselves. And, yeah. like, with social media and comparing yourself to other people, like never thinking that you're good enough or never thinking that your body is good enough it's like coming to terms with the fact that everybody has a different body like me and you we don't have the same body type we're yeah. both curvy but like i'm taller yeah. and like you have like really like your bum is like really big and nice like you know everyone has a different <laughs> body yeah and i think that for so long we've been kind of like i think that now we're going through this really incredible shift of like body positivity and like we yeah. still have a long way to go but there are a lot of women who are like you know embracing all of the natural things that come with just being a woman and like having cellulite and having stretch marks and all of that stuff yeah. i just think that once you can understand and embrace like this is what my body type is deserve to enjoy do you think, like, food and have a good relationship with it do you think you have like maybe had like body dysmorphia because of men or do you think it was women and men or do you think it was like do you know what i mean like do you think it was like boyfriends or was it like was it more like seeing girls on instagram and you're like whoa i i think it's a combination of things i think like i actually can remember the exact like moment that i started having a weird relationship with food when yeah. I very first started because I signed or I met with this agency and they were like you have to lose like an inch off your waist and an inch off your hips and like don't eat pasta I was like what oh my <laughs> god like don't eat this don't eat that yeah and I was like 17 at the time so I'm like okay like if that's how this works like that's what I'm gonna do yeah and I remember instantly just starting like fucking obsessing over food and like i would write down everything i would eat and like, like calorie, calorie count, count and yeah it was awful and for so long i was trying to like make myself smaller and i didn't realize like i remember i was on i was on the pill when i was like 15 and yeah. then i went off it when oh i was God, like 17 God. and i lost like 20 pounds and I, oh, I just dropped my pen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I thought that was? I thought it was a fucking cockroach. Ah! Oh my God, never again. Fuck that. Nah. Like, but, but, um, wait, okay, so yeah, I lost like 20 pounds and I didn't even see a difference. Like, yeah. I will look in the mirror and if I like wake up and I feel like I have a like an empty stomach or whatever, I'll be like, oh my gosh, like I look good, I'm skinny. Like sometimes I think I have the best body in the world. And still to this day, sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, it's awful, I look terrible. Yeah. But I think it came from modeling. 
yeah it came from constantly comparing myself to advertisements that were like very altered and retouched and it was like this totally unattainable thing instagram models that are like they're not necessarily models a lot of them but a lot of them like are you know instagram models and it's kind of i think it's almost made it more like it's it's great because it shows that like i think it's there's a lot more diversity in the modeling industry now and there Mm -hmm. are a lot more different body types which i think is incredible um but then I think it makes, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, well, she can do it. Why can't I do it? Do you know what I mean? I think it makes it more like, you know, like accessible to people. And they think, oh, well, she does it. You know, she's got loads of followers. And she, you know, they, you, know, you maybe don't look that different to them or something. It's just like, it makes it more. Like when all models were like tall, skinny, like, do you know what I mean? It was like, yeah. yeah. To now where it's like every, you know, everyone can pretty much be something on Instagram. So I think girls are now looking at it. And if they're not, they're like, why am I not good enough? You know, this guy's made it why can't I? Um, yeah. It's really sad because I think, you know what, like a lot of these girls as well have put a lot of hard work and determination into like, I know it sounds lame, but their Instagram pages, they are re- they work hard to stay, you know, relevant and things like that. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't even know why people follow me. Actually, I guess I kind of do know why, but it's not for the reasons <laughs> that I want it to be. I think that too though. I'm like, I'm like, why do people follow me? But I'm this is, it's honestly like, it, I, I freaked out. Like when I started my LC Eats, I was so scared. And when I started my YouTube, I was petrified. I was like, people have been following me for so long, fully based on what I look like and this two dimensional yeah. thing. Why are they going to give a shit about what I have to say or like what yeah. I'm passionate about? And then that was just this whole other, it's like really hard work to like remind yourself it doesn't matter just like do what is creatively fulfilling to you exactly like like what do you feel like you like where do you see yourself in like 10 years Mm, that's a good question genuinely i (laughs) i want to be like i want to be like genuinely quite successful in terms of like a business like i'm doing my like clothing line at the moment i really want to build that up Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to be like, I want to be really successful in business. I want to be like creating things. I want to do like trips and things like that. I just want to really build up my clothing line and just make it like the best it can be. Um, yeah. And I want to do something like different. So I think everyone does. But everyone sees like girls doing clothing lines and stuff and they think, you know, I've got nothing new to bring to the table. So why should I do it? That's genuinely not the okay. case. Like, if you have an idea, then why, why not just do it? Because like, Yeah, I'm actually yeah. doing one. Well, oh, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be like Elsie eats stuff, oh, but yeah, God, and I'm hopefully much. gonna put it out in like July. It's gonna be like Elsie eats merch, but it's gonna wow. be like. Did you ever see that pasta sweater that I made? That was like the pro. It was like the Prada logo, but it had pasta instead oh my of God, Prada. That's so cute. That's so and so I'm doing a line of those things, and it's gonna be really cute. So I'll send oh you God, one so when I make them. Yes, definitely. I need to send you my stuff. Actually, did I ask you if you're like? I need to send you like a bunch of my stuff. I would, I would love sure. it. Um, where are we at with time, by the way? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I think we have like twenty more minutes. Okay, cool. Right. So I also wanted to touch on like the lifestyle that we live because it is a very difficult lifestyle. I think not a lot. Of, I think a lot of people talk about mental health for sure, but I think not a lot of people touch on the lifestyle that we live and how it's difficult to maintain. Mm-hmm. Um, there are very di- like a lot of different people in the creative industry and it can be quite toxic so i kind of just wanted to speak to you because you moved that a little way before i did and yeah like the hub of the um the entertainment industry really isn't it yeah what's um, your experience has been with moving to la and the people and stuff so my so my dad is a film director um and so i kind of like grew up around that kind of stuff yeah but when i was like i started like going out and like (laughs) became a part of this whole like hollywood whatever no i'm like i do not go to any clubs i like never go out or anything yeah i know you never go out i never ever ever go out to a club (laughs) yeah i would never go to a club like it's not my thing at all but back in the day when i was like really young i started like, I would go to those places, and I would go to, like, you know, that. You're and curious when you're young, aren't you? So you're like, oh, Yeah, you and it was, like, it, the, the parties and the this and the that. And, like, I I definitely saw a lot of, like, crazy You stuff. saw enough, didn't you? You were like, 
but I feel like I feel like I got all of that out of my system like literally before I turned 21 like before it was even legal for yeah. me to be in those places I don't even know if I'm like supposed to be saying this stuff right now <laughs> like am I allowed to talk about this now there's no one but but yeah like I just I have no desire I think that I really 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 actually struggled for a long time in LA to find friends and people who like actually give a shit about me and anytime I would go to any of those places or like a club or one of those like parties I was like I don't think anybody here actually cares about me so why am I here and it was like and I'm so sensitive like I'm the most sensitive person ever so I don't know it really affected me and it was like I really need to find and it took me a really long time to find like really good solid friends and people that I like trust and now I just yeah. like play games and that's like <laughs> eat food and that's well, all like, I do but I moved so much like obviously I only moved there like well I moved there for like a month <laughs> Joke I know the virus I know. How crazy. <laughs> Um, I mean, I spent like two months in LA, like just the year before, and then a month this year when I moved out. It looks like I'm not worried about that. Sorry. There's so many wheels there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. 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 Sor
don't let people take advantage of you in that yeah. situation because I've been to many parties and many situations where guys will bring you there because they need girls around them and yeah. there can be very dangerous situations I just saw a situation I'm not going to name any names or anything but I just saw a situation that actually happened back in 2017 and um it was where a girl got um basically date raped and she like she she got spiked and um it resulted in her dying and it's like it's savage because it was in the la scene and it makes me think like what if that had been like on a night out where i've been with my friends it makes me think like that is so terrifying that you need to be so careful and make sure you have really good people around you at all times like in any yeah. situation where, where, wherever you're going out there whether it's london la any cities where you're where you're like first you know as a teen or like when you're 20s and you're just first start going out because i know so, i've met so many girls like this that's like their first sort of times going out and you have and to then it, so and then it's like people. every single night because these people will not look out for you at the end of the day there's a lot of people there that I'm, they don't have your best interest at heart yeah and i honestly i feel really lucky because i feel like and it's actually not really something I think about that often, but I feel like I was dealing, like I was a part of that and I would like go out and LA is just a really, really difficult place to live. And it's like a very, like- It's very, it can be very superficial. And it's like, like a lot more than totally, London. like a lot of people are like here to find fame or to whatever. And so I think that I got out of that pretty quickly. And it was like really, really important for like my well being and my mental health to feel like I had people in my life that were like real, you know? Yeah. And so I'm like glad that I found that. But did, was it like I'm different for you modeling like, wise like, too? Thank God. <laughs> oh my God, same. I know. Yeah. We always have the best little talks about this kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I feel like I met, I've met, like, good girls, like, obviously I'm friends with Sahara as well, and she's, like, an amazing girl, and, like, me and her, like, have had a few nights out, but we always stick together, and I feel like it's so, I'm so blessed that I have people that, like, when I go out and stuff, I have girls that, like, I look out for them, they look out for me, like, she'll be, like, one, like, one night we had, she was, like, oh, I need to get an Uber back, and I was, like, I'll get you an Uber back, like, to make sure she was safe, like, tracking her on her way home, because it is, you need to be, like, so careful, like, much more careful, I think, than in London like the situations are just crazy out there like <laughs> yeah I, like, oh my I'm god so I feel like bad, so like, far oh, removed like, I feel like lame I literally don't know anything anymore I never like I cannot remember last time I went to a club yeah that's crazy I mean I can't wait to get back in the club to be honest the only <laughs> the only time the only time that I like go out is if it's like a party and it's like a friend's or like birthday, birthday party yeah. and it's not at a club it's like they're throwing a party do you know what was so fun was benny's party um on the 4th of july last year oh yeah that was really fun that was so much fun for anyone that doesn't know benny had like an amazing party as hell <laughs> we had the best time it was like do you remember the taco van like that yeah best insane. tacos in the world Maurice best tacos Maurice. in the world like outside amazing um, yeah. Okay, I'm looking at our sheet. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you more questions, okay? Okay. Are we how are we doing on time now? Uh it's twelve forty four. Oh yeah, okay. actually, you know what? Tell me how you're dealing with quarantine and what is like tell me like a day in the life of quarantine and tell me how you've been handling it and tell the me. A day in the life of Corin Lottie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my god look at my shit been affecting you and and how you've been dealing with it and what you've been doing and if it's just just give me the lowdown um, and by the way it would sound huh? bad if i do it like this can you guys Wait. hear me oh hang on i think it is a little bit okay let me see that's so annoying i don't know what's doing that i don't either i'm just trying to put my phone down because my arms hurt ah! okay anyway tell me about quarantine so normally I wake up, I do my stretches. I've been trying to, I know this sounds really weird, but I've been trying to do the splits. So I'm like stretching every morning. <laughs> oh my God, that's like the opposite of what I do. <laughs> and then I do like an ab and bum workout. And then- um, Every morning you work yeah, out? every single morning I've been doing this. Oh my gosh. Actually, <laughs> no, that's wrong. That's completely <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I do it like most mornings. Like I say, like five hours. 
Okay. Out one single, not one single tag. But that's so fine. Like, enjoy this time. We have like two months of our lives where we don't have to do anything. So it's like, why not? I that's a good outlook. It's time to get like a revenge bod. Like, you've got a boyfriend. Like, I need to get myself out there. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a good outlook to have to just yeah. enjoy the time. I just like have really been. I've honestly been like really struggling. Oh, like I've been having gosh. a really hard time. I just yeah, think, I think that a lot of people in, are. Yeah, I think that this is a really hard time for people with like mental health problems and having so much time to think about to be like stuck with your thoughts and like having oh so God, much I found free that so time. At the beginning, like I was stuck. With yeah. Them. At night, it gets so much worse. I don't know if you feel this, but like at night, I'm like all these thoughts are rushing in my head. I'm like, I've got my apartment in LA, like that I'm not paying for, and I'm like not here, like I'm not there. Like, yeah. These thoughts, like these negative thoughts, come in. I'm Those. Like, are, that's how it is for me in the mornings like oh, no. and i feel like once it's closer to nighttime i feel a little bit better i don't know why it's because yeah. like it's the end of the day i i honestly don't know yeah. like maybe it's just because i'm like more tired from being so anxious so i just let myself not think about the oh, stuff like but it's weird like every day yeah. is different like some days i wake up and i'm like i'm okay i'm fine this is fine yeah, yeah. But Thanks. then there are other days when i'm just like i don't days where we feel good and then days where we feel like shit but like that's fine like i just think everyone needs to like relax and just remember like whatever fits you fits you because i think there's a lot of pressures from people being like oh i'm working out every day i'm you know doing this every day i'm like you know learning a new skill like you don't yeah have to, like, if you want to slob around and like literally do nothing and watch tv and watch a like fun series like things like yeah TV i need to i really like, need to it. remind myself that's okay i think i've yeah. been like really hard on myself this whole time and trying to be like like productive and like whatever and it's like it is it is okay to just like this is it's just like a weird time it's like a really this is the only time, time we'll probably ever get in our lives we, we can be unproductive and it's fine yeah i i guess i guess that's really good advice <laughs> i've been i've been like having such a hard time with it honestly but i think that's just because in regular life too like if i'm not being productive and i'm not like go 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 every single day i'm like I'm freaking out. Like I, I feel like that too. Yeah. So when I, I feel like in regular life, whatever that even is, like I'm able to distract myself and keep myself busy and like be working on stuff. So it's easier to not think about the things because I'm like managing my anxiety and managing yeah. my depression and and you putting feel like, like work into it. Stuff. I think that's like the hardest thing for me. Like. I don't know whether you feel like I, I, I feel like my friends, not seeing my friends is like the hardest thing, genuinely the hardest thing. Um, yeah. Thing, that is the only, like, I don't care about going to restaurants. I don't care about clubs. I just want to like, sit with my girlfriends. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just want to have like a fun time. Mm -hmm. like, like, I miss that. Well, have you been doing this completely alone? Have you been like pretty much in quarantine alone? Um, so I'm in quarantine with my family, which oh, is, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 which is like amazing, and I'm so happy that I'm here. Um, and I'm so blessed that I have so much to stay because I can't get back to America, obviously, because of the ban, but yeah, um, but it's been really nice to like reconnect with my family, which, like, you know, it's it's a really important time to do that, I think, to reconnect with people that you maybe like hadn't been talking to or whatever. And it's, yeah, how like who are you, you're staying with Benny, aren't you? Yeah, and oh, I'm so, like, I'm so glad. <laughs> Honestly, it's been, like, it's been the best thing ever. Like, where, like, everything is just good. Like, we just eat and chill. And also, I've been playing Animal Crossing, which takes up a lot of my time. Babe, like, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. On, on wait, you have it? it? Yes, I've got it. Do you, you want to come over island? later? <laughs> okay, yeah, come to my island. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, I'll come to yeah, yeah we'll I'm like really, this. We'll I'm like this. really annoyed right now because I accidentally um dug up all my rocks and oh. so I don't really have any rocks on my island so I'm having a really hard time getting uh iron nuggets and it's like really <laughs> I know when you yeah. need to make a new like hammer and it's like <laughs> no, I can't find any wrong. And so that's, like, that's, basically, that's basically what my life is now. I'm you know like, the most annoying thing is I keep getting stung by wasps when I shake the trees. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, and I have like medicine in storage at my house. Oh, okay, you're fine then. I don't have that yet. You need, yeah, you need to buy medicine. I'll give you some tips. But yeah, honestly, maybe we should have like an Animal Crossing party. Like, does anyone on here play Animal Crossing and want to come to my island later? 
<laughs> oh my and God, like honestly, bring me a present ever for anyone that doesn't have a nintendo switch or animal crossing like get it stop. yeah <laughs> seriously get it and you guys can come to my island and you all have to under the condition that you bring me an iron nugget <laughs> And then you can all come. Like, the people watching this, I've never played this game, will be like, what? I know, they're probably just like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? But it, I'm, like, so invested. Like, I just took out the loan on my on my third house. No, oh, second. my God, you'll see. You're way further than I am. Like You'll, you'll get there. You'll get I'm there. I'm still in the damn tent, bro. Like, I'm still in the tent. Uh, um, but anyway, how did we even get on? Oh, yeah, because what I've been doing, that's pretty yes. much all I've been doing, is playing Animal Crossing eating a lot of food, cooking. We baked, like, Benny baked the best cookies I've ever had in my oh life. Oh my god, you need to give me the recipe now. Like, I will, and I think I want to, like, I want to, like, send them to people that are in LA because they are so fucking good. They're, like, these soft chocolate chip brown butter toffee cookies. They're, like, the craziest thing ever. Oh god, so I all them. I really do is, like, edit videos on my computer. I've been, I've been... Uh, I've been like writing a little bit, but not really. We play card games. I play Animal Crossing, and then I have like a glass of wine in the evening, and that's so nice. Though I feel like we'll never get a time, especially because like Benny like tours a lot and stuff. So like it's such a nice time to just like sit with your family and just like like sit with your boyfriend and just like have a nice time and not have to worry. We don't have to worry for the first time in lives. We don't have to worry about anything else going on. We have yeah. no like shit. I should be at this event. Shit, I should be doing that. We don't have to do anything. Like, we have the nicest time to just sit and enjoy each other's company without the pressures of, like, any other social, like, things. Because, like, I feel like if I was here now and, like, there was other stuff going on, I'd be like, get me back now. <laughs> well, like, you would actually have FOMO. I would just be... But that's the You don't get FOMO. I don't have, I don't have FOMO. FOMO. I don't get FOMO about anything. Aww. I just think also... I just think that the reason it's been giving me such bad anxiety is because I'm just, like, I, um... I'm trying to like live with a lot of gratitude and realize how lucky I am to be yeah, in a position to be able to just chill and like play games and eat amazing food. But I, I'm just like my heart. I don't know. I just am like sad for the world. And I'm no, like, it's a really sad situation. I did want to just say as well, please donate to the NHS if you have time or you have even like a spare three or five pounds. Like please, please donate to the NHS works because they're doing an amazing job and I'm sure I don't know what the equivalent is in America like if there's any way you can donate to yeah America. there's so there's so many and like yeah, and yeah. like um there's a bunch of like ones that actually this is a great place to say that Benny and Maddie Matheson are doing a live stream next week I'll post the date and for every view that they get DoorDash is donating a, a free meal to, um, I think it's to like all the people who are on the front lines who are like working in the hospitals and um, combating the virus, which is like the scariest thing ever. I think it's also just weird because there's like no end date. So it's like... Yeah, I think that's the annoying thing. Like for us, we have like another three weeks, three to four weeks, they said, but they have no idea like if there's, you know, gonna be like that's the exact date. But um, no, it's important to <laughs> stay inside. Please stay inside <laughs> so we can get out of the situation quicker. Like it's crazy. Yeah. We need to stay safe in these times. And I can't wait to see you again. I wanna do like a margarita night when we're back. <laughs> I know. Let's I would play love games to. and like, drink margaritas. <laughs> I know. I wonder when I wonder when um travel is even gonna be allowed again. I have no idea when like like yeah, the like the borders are gonna open. <laughs> like, I know. I have no idea when anything's gonna happen again. Not a single clue. I heard that concerts or like festivals aren't even gonna happen until like twenty twenty one. 21 yeah i'm like coachella just isn't happening <laughs> i know this is my first year not going to coachella for like i don't know like eight years that's crazy. Or something this is my first time in this is this civil would be my fourth year which is crazy but yeah apparently not crazy times man but whatever we just gotta um, stay anyway, safe. I to wrap it up because i think we're near the end now anyway Okay, well, everyone, tune in to Maddie and Benny's yes. bad mukbang next week. I'll post it. And Lottie, thank you for talking to me and being so amazing and beautiful and insightful and honest. 
and always being open and I'm so glad I know you and I'm so glad you Thanks. wanted to come on with me and do this or I'm so glad you the idea and you and Benny are doing great I'm just like blessed to have people like you in my life <laughs> oh same let's FaceTime, let's FaceTime okay yes right. I would love to I'll probably call you after this and, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and talk about how insecure I feel <laughs> I'm probably gonna call you and be like, oh my god, I just did such a bad job on my life. Everyone hates me. Oh my god, no, you were amazing. You were incredible. And I think you were so honest and great. And just, yeah, you, it, was, it was so natural. It was great. All right. Oh, I love thanks. You so much. I appreciate I love you it. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>